You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, B&B fans. It's Belinda from Soap Dirt. And we've got to talk about some revisionist history that is coming up on the CBS soap opera. It seems like Brad Bell is about to undo what he said before about Emma Barber's fatal crash. And it seems like it's to try and glue back together a really dysfunctional relationship that a lot of fans don't want to see come back. So we're going to unpack all of this, including specific statements from Bradley Bell that directly conflict what we're seeing and hearing now on Bold and Beautiful. And hey, if you haven't, please click subscribe before we dredge it up, dig into it, and talk about why this is all so important right now. So I did a video this week about Finn and Xander targeting Thomas. And then after the most recent episodes and what's coming up next week, I'm confident that I am completely spot on. Xander flat out tells Finn that Thomas murdered Emma Barber. However, two things. That's not what the investigation into her death showed, but of course that can be, you know, open to interpretation. But what's more interesting is what showrunner and head writer Bradley Bell said a couple of months after she died on screen. And it completely contradicts what Xander is telling Fenn. So I wonder if Brad Bell's about to rewrite his own conclusions to rip Thomas and Hope apart because it smells that way to me. So Emma's death happened season 32, episode 191. If you want to go back and try and find it, it aired Friday, June 21st, 2019. I went back and I rewatched the episode before I taped this just to refresh my memory completely. Some people have said that Thomas crashed his car into hers, that he tapped her bumper, and some recaps said he ran her right off the road. So I went back to watch, and to be sure, Thomas was not behaving rationally or appropriately. So Emma took off from Forrester Creations, determined to get to Hope Logan to tell her that her baby was alive. And of course, Zoe Buckingham was the first one to find out her dad, Reese Buckingham, stole Liam and Hope's baby. Then Reese had his partner in crime, Felony Flo Fulton, sell the baby to Steffi in a private adoption. So just to remind you of the timeline, January 4th, 2019, Hope Logan's baby supposedly died while she was alone on Catalina Island and Liam couldn't get to her. Dr. Buckingham took advantage of the stormy night to steal her daughter and replace it with a stillborn child. So that was January. Liam found out and word spread to the family on Monday, January 7th, 2019. About six weeks later, February 15th, 2019, Zoe's suspicions were confirmed and her dad Reese admitted he had stolen the baby but swore her to secrecy. Xander Avant was the next to find out, which was a little while later, May 31st of that year. So Zoe sat on that secret for nearly four months before Xander found out. And then on June 7th, Thomas actually got the truth out of flow. And less than two weeks later, Emma Barber, Justin Barber's niece, found out the truth. And two weeks after she found out, she was dead in that fatal car accident. That night, she ran out upset. Thomas had told her to leave it alone. She was driving on a windy road late at night, driving fast, texting as she drove. Thomas was driving very close behind her because she yelled, get off my bumper, but he wasn't touching her. And if you watch the scenes, there's no metal on metal sounds. She had none of that, you know, Ford lurch that you have when your car has been hit. He did not hit her. However, he was definitely tailgating. She was texting. She was looking all over the place. She was driving too fast, curvy road, drove off the road. Her car tumbled down a ravine. Thomas got out of the car, stared down at the crash, kind of smirked, and then he drove away. All that was sketchy. And in case you're wondering if what he did was illegal, tailgating in California is actually considered an infraction that can get you a ticket, but not a crime. Both of them were speeding. 
and her texting while driving, those were definitely crimes. As to him not calling 911 or going down to help her, I did some research because if you guys listen here, you know I'm a research girl. California has no good Samaritan law. So the law there says you have no duty to rescue or assist a person in danger or in an emergency situation. Kind of horrible if you think about it, but that is California law. You can see somebody on fire on the side of the road, keep driving, you've done nothing wrong. You could see somebody bleeding out, not stop to dial 911. That's cool with the state of California. But in terms of morality and ethics, not calling 911 and not trying to help was a truly awful thing for Thomas to do, as was driving too close behind her. Rewatching the episode, though, he definitely did not bump her car, crash into her, any of that, but he was tailgating. So after her death on June 21st, It was less than two months later when showrunner and head writer Bradley Bell did an interview with Soap Opera Digest, and he specifically addressed Emma Barber's death. I'm going to read you an exact quote of what he said. Start quote. While Thomas may have been a contributing factor to the events that led to Emma's death, he is not responsible for her demise. In multiple ways, it's not Thomas's fault. Sure, there was an intimidation factor, but what happened to Emma was on her. When you throw in texting and driving, not paying attention, and driving way too fast on a winding road, combined with not being in a good headspace, something terrible happens. Yes, Thomas could have done more and handled the situation better, but I don't think the onus of guilt falls on him. End quote. That is straight from the horse's mouth, from the writer and how they intended this story to play out. Now we're seeing Brad Bell brought back Xander Avon, and the only reason to bring him back, as I suspected and told you guys before, was to fill Finn's ear with this murder talk. Xander has no proof of what happened. I I know some of y'all said in the comments he has evidence. So I'll tell you what this evidence is. He decided that Thomas killed her, and the evidence he has was he checked the GPS on Thomas's car, and he saw that Thomas stopped at the crash site the night she died. But if Thomas had no dent in his car, no scrape marks from running her off the road, because that all would have come out because there was an investigation, and Xander was saying a bunch of stuff back then. So all Xander knows is Thomas was at the site of her crash, stopped his car there briefly. Thomas does not have clean hands. I agree. But murder, I don't know. What Thomas was doing, basically the California law that they would come after him for was road rage. Driving aggressively with the intent to harass the driver in front of you. The harshest charge Thomas would likely face is assault with a deadly weapon. That's what happens when you're engaging in road rage. Even if you don't hit the other person's car, if they think you might be intending to, you can be charged with that. It can be either a misdemeanor and a felony, but the maximum sentence is four years for this activity in the state of California. Worst case, four years. But this plot isn't even about jail time for Thomas or I don't even think it's about justice for Emma. I've seen that hashtag trending. Don't think for a minute that that's what this is about because it is not. I think it's about Brad Bell justifying a reunion of Hope and Liam. We all know Liam is likely not going to be able to break up Steffi and Finn's marriage. I don't even think Finn making murder accusations about Steffi's brother is going to break up their marriage. But Hope was thoroughly done with Liam and his awful waffling ways, and ratings spiked up when Thomas and Hope started their fling after she took off her wedding ring. Then, as we migrated towards the Eric-centric storylines that were written so badly for the, the first, like, 70% of that... And away from the new romance, ratings started a week-over-week decline. Ratings dropped when they flipped from Thomas and Hope over to Fenn almost letting Kelly drown and all the Sheila stuff. 
Ratings picked up as they switched back to Hope as she was getting into the groove of being her new best self. And then ratings took a big nosedive when RJ took center stage and Eric's health crisis got worse and the writing on it got worse. That was like a double digit drop week over week. It was crazy. And the next big drop came when Luna started taking center stage and Eric's very vague illness progressed. People were very frustrated. The Eric thing was so badly written. Fans were not invested in Luna and RJ. They like when there's happy Steffi and Finn stuff, happy Hope and Thomas stuff, ratings go up. When Brad Bell tries to muck up these relationships, viewers tune out. And now he's getting ready to do something that I think could absolutely torch ratings. If this is a story where Hope defies everyone and stands by her man, I think it would do okay. But I do not see that happening. I see Brad Bell trashing Thomas again, turning him again into an obsessed villain and shoving Hope back at Liam. I know there's a pile of fans. I know a lot of you listening who hate Hope with Thomas. That's fine. But how can anybody want her back with Liam, the cheating waffler who's blatantly in love with her former and future stepsister? If they break up Thomas and Hope, I do think it would hurt ratings. If they put her back with Liam, I can't even imagine the fallout from that. It is insane. Of course, we'll see. But in Brad Bell's own words, Emma was the one responsible for her death. So I'm curious to see if he is about to completely contradict his own words that he issued at the time and rewrites this as a murder at Thomas's hands to further whatever current agenda he's pushing. So what do you guys think? Please click subscribe if you haven't and definitely drop your comments about what you think about what Brad Bell said back then and what he's doing now. Come back soon for more. We're here chatting about bald seven days a week. As always, it's Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more.